I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. October 30th, 1986, Unity Township, Pennsylvania. A resident from a rural area in Unity Township, not far from the Trobe, called me, Stan Gordon, on October 30th, 1986. While taking a walk that morning, he came across a number of large, strange footprints. I quickly went out to that location to interview the witness and to look over the area. Upon arrival, I learned that, since that past summer, the electric fence on the property had been broken on five occasions. The family had purchased some horses and had erected the fence line around a few acres. The fence had been broken at different locations. The top of the three-wire fence was about four feet high. At times, the top strand was broken, yet other times it would be broken around the bottom. The man thought there was the possibility that somehow a horse was doing this, but after our findings on that day, he felt that something else was involved. In this instance, at the top of a high hill, the four-foot-high top wire on the fence was found broken alongside a crushed electric insulator. Alongside of this were three quite strange footprints on the ground. The number of toes were not clearly defined, but they looked similar to the famous cast of a three-toed footprint that I had taken outside of Greensburg on August 7, 1973. That footprint was 13 inches long and 8 inches wide. The fact that this footprint measured exactly the same as the one I had cast 13 years before was of great interest to me. I made a cast of the best track since the ground conditions were not good for casting. About two months earlier, a neighbor had been taking a walk up this particular hill when they heard an unusual sound, like that of an animal wheezing. Additionally, they also heard sounds of something heavy moving off through the woods. During this time period, a rabbit was found with its neck broken. Also, two cats were found in an unusual manner, one with its intestines hanging out and the other with a broken neck. A woman who lives just down the road reportedly called the state police when she heard a loud, strange sound similar to a woman screaming in pain. This area is located in the general region that has had a lot of Bigfoot activity reported over the years. On March 13, 1989, near Wheatland in Mercer County, a woman reported an unusual incident. About 7.15 p.m., the dog started to run back and forth in the house and then began to growl. The dog wanted to go outside, so the woman let him out, but he soon returned inside. The dog started going back and forth to the doors and wanted out again. The woman thought that the dog smelled something outside. Concerned that something was wrong, she called out to her husband. He took their pet outside, and the dog began to track something through the yard to the edge of the woods. After about five minutes, the dog began to pursue whatever was moving ahead of them. The man could hear the sounds of something heavy running through the woods, along with the apparent sound of tree branches snapping as it made its way ahead. The man called to his dog to come back, then returned to the house, perplexed by what was in the woods. Meanwhile, his wife had also heard the noises from the woods. Soon after, they took the dog outside, and it led them to a number of footprints close to the side of their home. The family was shaken up enough by the incident to call the local police, who came to the house to investigate. The police officer found a wide path that had been knocked down by something that had moved through that area. They also called the Pennsylvania Game Commission and another agency, but neither was able to identify the tracks. February 1996 South Connellsville. It was late evening in February when a sound was heard outside a witness's home. Looking outside, the witness observed a series of footprints in the freshly falling snow. Upon examination, the footprints were estimated to be about 15 inches in length, with a large stride between the tracks. The tracks continued for a distance. At one point, whatever made the tracks stepped over a woodpile and continued over a bank. The witness was intrigued enough to take several photographs of the impressions. Having lived in that area for many years, she had never seen such unusual footprints before. This location is in the heart of the Chestnut Ridge, an area which has historically produced many reported encounters with Bigfoot. March 12, 1997, Derry Township A profoundly strange event occurred in a rural location of Westmoreland County in Derry Township. 
It was during the early morning hours of March 12, 1997, when I answered a call on my UFO Bigfoot hotline. The voice on the phone seemed a little nervous, and the caller began to relate the details of what had occurred at about 3 a.m., involving himself and two friends. These young men worked during the night and were driving down a rural road when a hubcap came off their vehicle and rolled across the road into a field in the vicinity of some old cars. A short time later, they returned to that area to try to recover the missing hubcap. Their vehicle was parked about 250 feet from the field. One fellow remained inside the car. The other two men began to search for the wheel cover. After a short time, the silence was suddenly broken by an odd sound described as being like metal on metal and then by what seemed to be a growl from a dog. They moved slowly away from that spot. The one fellow yelled to his companion to stop as he saw something moving ahead. Fear engulfed the two men when one of them shined a flashlight on the source of the noise. What they saw was not a dog, but a huge, white-hair-covered, ape-like creature rising up from the ground. A feeling of panic came over one fellow as the creature stared at the two men. That man quickly ran off toward the parked vehicle and yelled to the driver in the vehicle to start the motor. The other man continued to stare at the creature for what seemed like unending moments, then quickly ran off as well. As the trio pulled away, one of the fellows told his friends that he had dropped his father's expensive knife and some keys as well. As they passed near the location where they had seen the creature, the lost items were not seen, so they pulled over to see if they could spot them. They were not located and they left the area. Then another odd event occurred. As they left the scene and drove just a short distance, an upscale red and silver Chevy dual-wheel truck passed them in the opposite direction at a fast pace. The trio watched as this truck pulled onto a side road, then turned around and began to follow them down the road. The Chevy truck increased its speed and came right up to the rear bumper of their vehicle, keeping that position for about half a mile. Each man in the car had the feeling that whoever was in the truck was obtaining their license number. Finally, the truck stopped abruptly in the roadway, started backing up, turned its lights off, and backed onto a side road. The three witnesses continued on to one of their residences. When discussing the events, two of them decided to go back to the location where they saw the creature in order to find the knife and keys, as well to see if they could spot the creature again and determine what it was. The third man had no interest in returning to look around, so he stayed at the residence. One of the men was very proud of his car, which he had put a lot of work into and which was equipped with a modified high-speed engine. The two men drove that car back to the field area. The men also took with them an automobile headlight that they had converted to use as a high-powered spotlight. When they arrived, they shined the spotlight around the field and the old vehicles, and a short time later, the creature appeared again. The beam of light was directed on the creature. This time, the two men got a good look at the mysterious beast. The blinding light was concentrated on its head area, and the beast appeared to be getting agitated by the concentrated bright beam. Walking upright on two legs, it began to chase the car and got to within about three feet from the rear bumper. It continued to follow them for a short distance as they pulled away from it and left the area. The creature was observed in several different positions during the various events such as first stooped, then later on all fours, and also walking upright like a human. The sound of something heavy was apparent when the creature moved across the ground. The final encounter with the creature that night was most dramatic. The owner of the modified engine car decided to make one last attempt on his own to find the knife and keys he had dropped in the field. He returned alone and drove slowly past the area. Not seeing the strange creature, he pulled into the field and soon spotted the knife. He never got out of his car, but opened the door, reached out, and grabbed the knife. He kept driving around the area, quite slowly trying to locate the keys. Then suddenly, he felt a heavy thump toward the rear of his car. The driver looked into his rear mirror and was shocked to see the huge, hairy creature leaning on the back of the car, peering at him through his rear window. Its eyes seemed to have a reddish glow. The driver pushed down harder than gas, trying to quickly exit the area, but the car wouldn't move. As the man continued to hit the gas, the sound from his tailpipes was getting louder by the moment. Suddenly, the creature was no longer on the car and he was able to make a quick getaway. The man felt certain that it was the car's high-pitched noise that finally made the creature leave the vehicle alone. 
The man later found a convenience store open and went inside to get something to eat and de-stress. He parked his car nearby so that he could keep an eye on it. When he returned to his car, he saw several teenagers checking out his car. He became more alarmed after they asked him if he had been attacked by some kind of animal, as there appeared to be claw marks on the back of the vehicle. The man looked, and there in the paint and metal on the rear of the vehicle were two long scratches. The day after the incident, the driver went back to the location of the strange encounter during the daylight. The ground was hard from the cold weather, and no footprints could be seen where the creature had been. After I spoke with the initial caller about the events that happened earlier that morning, I made contact with the others involved and made arrangements to meet later that day for an interview and to examine the damaged car. The second party I talked with by phone was the man who accompanied the driver of the car with the modified engine and who had shined the spotlight on the creature. We discussed the events and set up a time to meet. I learned later that other intriguing events had taken place with two of the witnesses shortly after our phone calls. Apparently, about 10 minutes after I had spoken with the second party on the phone, he received a disturbing phone call. As best he could remember, the caller said, This is field agent so-and-so from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. About the incidents last night, forget about what you saw, and I strongly suggest that you don't talk any further with Stan Gordon. Then the caller hung up. The other man received a phone message that reportedly said, Stay away, leave it alone, forget about it. He was also informed by his relatives that some men drove up to his house in Chevy Caprice cars, often used by law enforcement officers at that time. Two men were in each vehicle, and they wanted to talk with the fellow who was driving the car during the previous night's incident. After these occurrences, the men were not contacted again. Whether or not it was actually the FBI that was involved with this incident is unconfirmed. I did write a letter to the Pittsburgh FBI office, but never received a reply. Regardless of who these mysterious people were, how did they learn of this incident, and how did they know that the witnesses had contacted me? It was late afternoon on March 19, 1983, when campers were having a great time preparing fires to keep warm and were hiking around the nearby woods. But something reportedly occurred at that campsite in Armstrong County that apparently frightened some of those in attendance. While a small group of campers was pumping water, a large, hair-covered creature suddenly entered the campground from the surrounding woods. The animal slowly began walking toward the people, who quickly ran away. Witnesses described a hair-covered, man-like creature, about six and a half feet tall, with broad shoulders, narrow hips, and a peak at the top of its head. Walking upright, the beast continued to move around the perimeter of the campsite, then returned to the woods. The creature reportedly came to within 30 feet of some of the observers. To protect themselves, some of the campers reportedly bent coat hangers over the doorknobs of their cabins in an effort to prevent the creature from entering their dwellings. The local authorities were called, but a search of the area revealed no concrete evidence of the animal. Later in the evening, the campers conducted their own search as they were still uneasy about their unexpected visitor. What they noticed in the camp area was an odd chemical odor they described as similar to sulfur. No further sighting reports were received from this camp. I received a phone call on September 28, 2002, from a man who lived with his family in a remote location in Derry Township. The man wanted to inform me that two separate family members, on different occasions, had seen a creature he described as a Bigfoot. After receiving permission to interview those involved and to search for evidence, I packed up my gear. My wife, Debbie, accompanied me to the area to assist with photography. The man's son had the first encounter on September 11, 2002, during the early evening. The young fellow appeared very serious and gave us a detailed account of what had taken place. When riding a bicycle, he heard crashing sounds coming from the woods. It sounded like something was hitting a log, along with branches being broken. About 300 feet ahead, he saw a big, brown, human-looking thing, but very tall. The creature was moving along the tree line, but at times, in various clearings, the youngster got a good look at the strange animal. He described it as man-like, covered with dark brown hair, and standing about eight feet tall. The head of the beast was somewhat cone-shaped, and the animal appeared to be broad-shouldered and had long arms. The creature appeared to move in a stooped manner, but took very long strides as it walked. 
The fellow ran home to tell his father what he had seen. They quickly searched the area, but found no signs of their uninvited visitor. An even more amazing daylight encounter took place during the afternoon of September 27th, when the man's wife was driving away from their house. She was talking to her husband on the cell phone as the event unfolded. She heard something that sounded like tree limbs breaking in the woods to her left, and she assumed that a deer was about to exit the forest. She slowed down, expecting to see a deer run from the woods, but instead saw a tall, man-like creature emerge from a clearing in the woods. She quickly told her husband what had happened. The creature was covered with long brown hair that appeared to be about 12 inches in length. It stood about 8 feet tall and was quite broad-shouldered. The arms were long, hanging down to around its knees. She saw the creature in an open field about 45 yards from her car. The creature was slightly hunched over as it walked across the open field. With its long strides, it covered the 100-foot-long field quickly. Oddly, the creature did not swing its arms as it moved. The witness looked on as the creature reached the edge of the field. The woman watched in amazement as the creature stepped over the barbed wire fence without slowing down or breaking stride. Photo shown is Stan Gordon standing next to the fence that the creature went over with ease. The creature continued walking deeper into the woods and was lost from sight. The woman remained on the phone with her husband during the sighting, becoming more frightened as each second passed. That fence, by the way, was 44 inches high. During my investigation, I was unable to locate any hair or other evidence on the barbed wire fence or any footprints. Both witnesses appeared to be sincere and credible, wanting no publicity. I have been out in that general area many times since the early 1970s, as many local residents had reported encountering similar creatures. July 10, 2009, Uniontown On July 10, 2009, a strange occurrence took place on a two-lane road in Fayette County, outside the city of Uniontown. The location is about 50 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. The report was initially received by the Sasquatch Watch of Virginia, which then referred the sighting to Eric Altman, the director of the Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society, to investigate. A PBS team comprising Eric Altman and members Dave and Cindy Dragozin went to the scene on July 15, 2009, to look over the area for any evidence and to interview the witness. Eric invited me to take part in the investigation. It was about 6 p.m. on a warm and clear day when the encounter occurred. A woman was driving her car at about 35 to 40 miles per hour and watching the road ahead. Then suddenly, out of the corner of her eye, she saw to her left what she thought was a person approaching her vehicle, as though someone was about to walk in front of her car. She thought she was going to crash right into him. So, rather than hit the person, she swerved quickly to the right side of the road, thankfully that no other cars or pedestrians were there at the time. As she swerved, she looked at the figure again and realized she was not looking at a human being, but an odd, hair-covered creature. As the woman sat there momentarily, she looked in her rearview mirror and saw the creature was now behind her car. She watched in amazement as the creature leaped across the trunk area, explaining that she looked just in time to see it leap. Very shaken, she sat there for a few more seconds, trying to sort out in her mind what had just occurred. When she looked up toward her right, the hairy beast was running down a side road about 75 feet away, then it moved out of sight. The episode lasted just several seconds, but the woman had a chance to get a good look at the creature since this was a close-range sighting in daylight conditions. The creature was described as a dark-colored, hair-covered, man-like creature. The witness felt that it was at least six feet tall or slightly taller. The head was described as large and elongated and covered in hair that looked wild. Its neck was rather odd-looking, as it was hair-covered, but it seemed to be thin and long. According to the woman who saw it, the neck looked strange because the head was so big and the shoulders were wide. The creature walked upright on two legs and had long arms that hung down to the knees or past the knees. The hair on its arms was described as being quite long, similar to ape hair. The witness thought the hands were also covered with hair. The creature had wide shoulders that were rounded and it was stocky and muscular in appearance. Its chest was also covered with thick hair. The woman stated that while she didn't see any muscles, 
the creature appeared to be in quite good physical shape from the way it moved. The woman recalled a detailed description of its facial features. The face itself was hair-covered, however, an exposed area looked white, and a major contrast would be seen in color from the hair. The nose was flat and dark, the ears were hair-covered and could not be seen. The mouth area was not clearly seen. Hair protruded from all over the face, similar to that of a canine or a wolf. These features gave the woman the impression that it was older in age. The witness stated that it was the eyes that really caught her attention and scared her. They were somewhat circular in shape and at least twice as large as that of a human. In describing them, she talked about the fierceness, the wild look. It looked like it was crazy. The eyes were dark, possibly black, and were wide set. She said the eyes had no iris and no whites. She believes this is why the eyes look so strange. No unusual odors or sounds were detected during the occurrence. The driver did have her window up and the air conditioner running at the time. After the incident, the woman drove to a safe area to park and sat there, trying to find an explanation for what she had seen. She tried to rationalize that this was just a human, maybe a person in a costume, but after reviewing what had happened, she ruled out that possibility. The creature was running very fast, directly into the path of her car, and it did not seem to care that it was going to be hit by the car. Also, the speed and agility of the creature, as evidenced when it leaped over the trunk of the car, seemed beyond the ability of a human being. Inspection of the wooded area revealed no unusual signs or evidence of the creature's presence. We also looked over the car for any evidence as well. When I examined the back of the car, a large scratched area on the left side got my attention. The family had never noticed this scratched area on the car before. Dave and I measured the scratches of the damaged area, which was located about six inches from the left taillight. The affected area was about eight and a half inches long and two inches in width. Numerous vertical and horizontal thin scratch lines penetrated the paint surface. While it is uncertain, the possibility exists that this damage might have been caused by contact from the creature as it leaped across the trunk of the car. The creature was last seen walking in a direction that would have taken it through a heavily wooded area toward Jumminville. This is another area where I have investigated many other Bigfoot sightings. This is a drawing of the creature based on the eyewitness's description. On August 9, 1991, a group of young fellows were spotting deer in the woods one evening near the border of Westmoreland and Indiana counties. They soon saw more than they expected in their light beams. About 200 feet away, they observed a dark, hair-covered creature standing upright and eating berries. At first they thought it was a bear, but after watching the creature for more than five minutes, they realized that they were seeing an animal much different than a bear. The group also noticed a sulfur smell in the air at the same time of the sighting. The creature had red eyes, and as it reached up for the berries and continued to eat them, the creature always had its eyes toward the group of observers. The creature remained standing the entire time. The fellows became unnerved after their estimated five-minute observation and left the area. The next day, they returned with other people to search the area of the sighting. The foliage was flattened in the area where the creature had stood. The berry plants were picked clean and smashed down. To gauge the height of the creature, one man who was over six feet tall stood at the spot where the creature was sighted while the others returned to their original vantage point. Using this, they estimated that the creature was over nine feet tall. In the early morning of March 19, 1988, at 12.45 a.m., a man driving on a back road in Derry Township was startled when a deer ran across the road about five car lengths in front of him. That was alarming enough, but the man was even more startled to see that the deer was being chased by a large, hairy, man-like creature running upright on two legs. Both the deer and creature continued into the woods. The driver left the area as quickly as he could. 1987. Derry Township. Bigfoot incidents were continually reported during 1987. During this time period, residents reported frightful high-pitched screams unlike anything they had ever heard before. Not only were there actual sightings of the creature, but other incidents also seemed to indicate their presence. 
I also heard accounts of dogs and cats that were frightened, as well as some animals that were missing. Residents of a mobile home community were complaining of nighttime prowlers peering in their windows, which were over eight feet off the ground. Some witnesses saw the shadowy figure of a tall creature with brilliant glowing red eyes during the night. One of the sightings was a creature incident on February 1, 1987, at 2.30 a.m., when the Bigfoot walked out in front of a car in a remote area near Gray Station, where many other incidents have also been reported. The creature walked upright and stood about eight feet tall, with its eyes glowing a bright pinkish red in the headlights. The witness was able to see two large fangs from the top of the mouth. In the same general area, on April 8, 1987, another witness reported that, as he was sitting in his car, he noticed something dark approaching from the woods, moving in his direction. He turned on his headlights and was shocked to see what he described as a huge, hairy, ape-like creature that stood between 9 and 10 feet tall, with eyes that glowed bright red. Its arms hung down past its knees, and it made a loud grunting sound as it approached the car. He noticed a strong smell of sulfur in the area as the creature approached to within 30 feet of the car, at which point the man spun out of the sight in his vehicle, watching the creature in his rearview mirror as he sped away. A short time later, he brought another person back to the site, who confirmed the lingering sulfur odor. Consistently over the years, sightings have been in concentrated areas, especially along the Chestnut Ridge area around La Trope, Ligonier, and Derry. This ridge is desolate in many areas, has numerous caves, and has a large population of rattlesnakes. Over the years, a number of explorers and hikers have reported sightings of these beasts. In the afternoon of May 5, 1987, one such individual in a section of the ridge known as Bear Pond Hollow claimed that he saw such a creature, noting its long stride as it moved through the brush. Near New Alexandria, on May 16, 1987, two men driving down a back road had their passage blocked by a dark, hair-covered, man-like creature that stood ahead of them. As the men approached a bridge, they stopped when they saw the creature. After several minutes of staring at it, one of the men reached for a twenty-two rifle that was in the car and fired twice over the creature's head. Finally, it turned and slowly walked away into the wooded area. January 2, 1983, Hempfield Township It was a winter day in 1983 when two workmen saw something that had boggled their minds. It was about 2.30 p.m. on January 2, 1983, in rural Hempfield Township, just a few miles outside of the city of Greensburg. The men were doing some construction work when they noticed two people come out of a house across the road and begin to work on a farm tractor. About 15 minutes later, one of the construction workers noticed what appeared to be two tall man-like figures walking on a distant hill. As he continued to watch them, he realized there was something quite unusual about them, and so he pointed them out to his helper. The two creatures began to then walk in a seemingly cautious fashion into a nearby field across the road. The silhouette of their huge bodies could at times be seen against the skyline. The creatures appeared to be black in color, broad-shouldered, and with long arms. They seemed to be bent over as they walked. The one creature, suddenly, and seemingly with purpose, moved away from the other creature. Bending down, it picked up something from the ground, then hoisted it over its shoulder. The witnesses were of the opinion that it might have been a deer carcass. It then walked over to the other creature. Both creatures then walked into the woods that were about 200 yards away. The creatures did not appear to move quickly, but due to their long legs, their strides let them cover a lot of area quickly. About 15 minutes later, the construction workers watched as the farmers hitched the tractor to a flail and proceeded to move up into the area where the creatures had been a short time before. They soon realized just how huge the two creatures had actually been. Comparing the size of the men and their equipment with the size of the creatures, they soon realized that the creatures had to be about 12 feet tall and at least twice as broad-shouldered as the men. The measurement they used to determine this was that the shoot of the flail was nine feet high. Later, the workmen walked over to the site where they had seen the giant man-like creatures. The ground was partially frozen, but they found some scuff marks on the ground surface in that area. 
Investigator George Lutz and another man met with the witnesses about a week after the incident at the site. Using two-way radios, they compared the sizes of the men from the location of observation to the spot where the creatures were seen. Doing this, they were able to determine that the size of the men was only about half as tall as the creatures, which corroborates their original estimation of height. When I interviewed the witnesses involved, they were both upset and astonished by what they had seen. Years later, one witness related to me how his sighting had an impact on his life. Reports of Bigfoot activity increased in Westmoreland and Cambria counties in May 1988 and continued throughout that year. Most of the reports were quite similar, involving a creature walking upright from 7 to 8 feet tall, covered with hair and with long arms. During this time, several of the sightings were during daylight hours, and the creatures often were seen at close range. Again, in Westmoreland County, the sightings were concentrated in the Chestnut Ridge area between Derry, Latrobe, and Ligonier. One event occurred at a farmhouse near the base of Chestnut Ridge on June 26, 1988. When a family returned home, they found their livestock to be nervous. They became more concerned when they found where a floodlight six feet off the ground had been cleanly ripped from its socket along with large footprints around the house. A PASU team arrived at their home a short time later and was able to make a plaster cast of one of the footprints. The print measured 16 inches long and 10 inches wide, although poor ground conditions did not clearly reveal the number of toes. Three days later, the lady of the house was awakened at 7 a.m. by a noise. She was startled when she peered out her kitchen window to see a large hairy creature walking with long strides along the fence line bordering her stables. The color of its hair in the morning sun was described as grayish-brown. Its height was estimated to be seven feet, and it had no apparent neck or waist. Although she took three photographs of the creature, some defect in the camera prevented her pictures from being developed. Previously, the family had never had any problems with the camera. On September 13, 1983, I, Stan Gordon, received a phone call on my UFO hotline from a man who lived near Connellsville in Fayette County, Pennsylvania. The man and some neighbors were watching two strange star-like objects in the sky that were changing colors from red to white. While under observation, one of the objects moved across the sky, dropped downward, and then hovered. Then the object suddenly shot across the sky toward the west and moved out of sight within seconds. The man who called me about the strange lights in the sky revealed some other events that had taken place in the same area for the past few months, but seemed to be escalating during the last couple of days. He explained how his young child was awakened during the night and was screaming, shaking, and staring at the window facing a garden. He had also noticed that his pets had been disturbed and frightened during this time period. What had really alarmed the man was when he discovered the vegetables in his garden knocked down and a large footprint in the garden about 10 feet from the window of the room where his child slept. The family had also been hearing strange baby crying sounds that seemed to cause a reaction from the local wildlife. Once the cries were heard, the surroundings became silent, and the pets and young child suddenly became frightened. The next day, I led a PASU team to Fayette County to investigate this recent sighting of strange lights in the sky and other events. We interviewed the man who initially reported the incident and others who were involved. After this, the initial witness reluctantly revealed details of a close encounter that he had with a Bigfoot creature in August of 1982 while fishing at a pond outside of Connellsville. The man had been fearful to talk about what he had seen with those close to him, thinking that they would consider him crazy. The witness, though, was certain of what he had seen. On the day of the incident, the man was sitting on a log near the edge of the water. It was early evening, and the fisherman had been there only a short time when he heard some movement behind him in the woods. He didn't pay much attention to the sounds, assuming that another person was in the area. Just a short time later, the fellow turned and was so frightened by what he saw that he fell backwards off the log. About 45 yards away stood a huge, hair-covered, man-like creature that he estimated was about 8 feet tall. The creature stood upright and was motionless as it stared toward the fisherman. The creature was covered with dark hair 
yet the hair around the head area was a smoky gray color. The facial hair appeared to be lighter than other areas of the body. The creature's eyes were described as large, dark, and deep-set. The arms were long, hanging down past the knees, and the hands appeared larger than that of a human. The feet appeared to be large and covered with hair. As he continued to watch the creature, he detected a musty smell in the air. The staring match between the man and the beast continued for what seemed to be several minutes. He was uncertain if he should stay where he was or run away. Suddenly the creature turned and reached out its arms, parting some tree branches as it walked into the woods ahead. The witness was reluctant to tell us what had also occurred during the face-to-face -face confrontation with the unknown hairy beast. The man said that, in his mind, he was thinking while looking at the creature, What are you? The man said that although he was somewhat frightened of the animal, he wanted it to come closer and try to communicate with it. He said a strange inner warmth came over him and he felt a heavy pressure move across his forehead. The man said that he had a feeling that the creature was trying to impress a message into his mind, but he could not perceive the information. It was difficult for the witness to relate this to us. The man frequently fished at the same pond where he had the creature encounter in 1982. We went to the pond while in the area to look around. Since this witness stated that, just a few days before, he had seen several large footprints around the fishing area that went into the woods. While looking over the terrain, we located one large three-toed footprint that was similar to other tracks that had been found in other state locations in the past years. The track had water seeping into it and could not be cast, so only photos were taken. Another person living near this area told us that something had been pounding on her mobile home. She had also heard strange baby crying sounds. Fall 1982, Pittsburgh area. George Lutz and I made a trip into a rural location in the Pittsburgh area. There had been recent alleged sightings of cougars, also known as mountain lions, reported from the area. These animals frequented the woods of Pennsylvania many years ago, but have been declared officially extinct in this part of the country since the late 1890s. While we were interviewing a witness who swore that a mountain lion was frequenting the area, we learned of another strange incident that had taken place on a farm at another location. We had been told that something had apparently broken into a well-constructed turkey pen and had not only killed a large number of the birds, but had also consumed a generous portion of them as well. It was about 3 a.m. when the owners of the property heard their dogs bark for just a short time. When the people awakened the next morning, they found two live turkeys on the front porch of their home, which is about 70 feet from the poultry pen. The family members walked down to the pen and were shocked at what they saw. Nine other turkeys lay dead, scattered about in the snow fence that surrounded the pen. The turkeys each weighed between 10 and 12 pounds. The sight was disturbing. Whatever had broken into the pen and attacked the birds had quite an appetite. Each turkey had the breast meat eaten from it, as well as organs such as the heart and liver. Other remains of the turkeys were scattered outside of the pen. Whatever had killed the turkeys had apparently taken one out at a time. There was no blood inside the coop. The blood was on the outside and on the ground. During the night of the turkey attack, the family did not hear any odd sounds or disturbances. The family, though, had noticed in recent months a change in the pattern of a horse and cow staying closer to the house than usual, as if being frightened by something. During the interview, it was revealed that one family member had an experience in early July. This person heard a strange loud sound that was described like a woman in pain. This high-pitched scream lasted several seconds and scared the person who heard it. The same night the turkeys were attacked, another report came in of an assault on chickens at a nearby farm. According to reports, several chickens were found totally consumed, except for the heads. It was estimated that between the turkey and chicken kills, a total of about 35 pounds of meat appeared to have been consumed that night. It is not known whether one or more creatures was involved, or what type of animal wreaked such havoc that night. Could this have been a pack of wild dogs, a mountain lion? or something else even more unusual. 
This event involves a man who was walking near Gray Station in early December of 1986. It was about dusk as the man walked on the pathway that led out of the woods near the railroad tracks, when suddenly a large tree branch was thrown at his feet. He looked up to see a creature farther down the path, standing motionless and just staring at him. He described the creature as standing about eight to nine feet tall, with a large head, broad shoulders, its arms hanging down below its knees and covered with hair. The eyes of the creature were widely separated, and the fingers appeared unusually long. The fellow said he could hear the animal making a heavy breathing noise. For five long minutes, they had a visual standoff. Then the creature suddenly turned and took a large step over a bank, moving out of the man's line of sight. As the creature made off, it did so in a stooped fashion. The ground was frozen at the time, and the man said he could hear heavy footsteps as the creature moved off. This fellow, who had spent many years in the woods, was now reluctant to walk in that area as a direct result of this encounter. He told me that he was hesitant to pursue the creature, as he was stunned by the encounter, or possibly even slightly in shock. Week of February 14th, 1988 A young scout and his family lived on the Ligonier side of Chestnut Ridge. During the week of February 14th, 1988, he was playing in a wooded area near his home when he noticed ahead of him a tall, human-like figure, but it was covered with dark brown hair. The creature was about 150 feet away and was just standing there when it apparently realized it was being observed. It turned and looked at the boy for about a minute, then walked deeper into the woods. The youth said its arms hung down below its knees, and he noticed a strong smell in the air, like a wet dog, but much stronger. The boy waited for a while, but the creature did not return. He was curious as to what it was, since he could only describe it as a big ape walking like a man. He walked over to the spot where it had been standing, and it was there he found a number of footprints in the muddy area, all of which were about 15 inches long and had indistinct toes, possibly four in number. When he told his parents about his experience, they told him that it was just his imagination. But the boy was insistent that he had seen the creature. He went to the library to locate some books on wildlife of the world to try to find the animal he had seen. Except for a gorilla, nothing in the books was even close to its appearance. July 30, 1982. Youngwood, New Stanton. During the summer of 1982, I was contacted about an encounter with a tall, hair-covered creature that fit the description of Bigfoot. I went to the location where the sighting had occurred, spoke with witnesses, and searched for evidence. I learned that on the evening of July 30th, 1982, two couples decided to take a moonlit walk to a scenic lookout located between Youngwood and New Stanton. It was about 11 p.m. when they decided to walk down a local road. As they started moving up to the top of a hill, they began to hear a rattling and hissing noise coming from above them. When they reached the top, they noticed something odd in the distance. In the area where the sounds were coming from sat a capped gas well, which was moving back and forth, as though someone was shaking it. This activity soon ceased. The group of people continued to walk toward the opposite side of the hill that overlooks the area. The couple sat there for a while, enjoying the evening, when one of the men heard a low moaning and whining sound in the distance and mentioned it to the others. The others heard nothing and kept on talking. A short time later, the same man and one of the women both heard the sounds at the same time. The noise began to increase in volume, and soon all four people heard it. Initially, the sounds were somewhat frightening, but after a period of time, the group of people began to relax, laughed, and even loudly mocked the sounds. As the people continued their vocalizations, the strange sounds got even louder, and the source seemed to be moving closer to their location. One fellow was concerned that the moaning sound might be coming from someone who was hurt, and much to his wife's distress, stated that he was going to have a look. She pleaded with him not to go. It was about then that the moaning sounds began to fade again, and the couple began to relax and joked about what had happened. Then, out of the silence, they heard a rustling sound coming from their left, near a baseball field. One man noticed that about 25 yards away, something large and dark in color appeared to be moving close to the ground. The group got up and looked in that direction. One of the men noticed that his friend's eyes were very large as he stared intently at something. That's when he saw it. 
Something huge, about seven to nine feet tall, was standing upright beside the baseball backstop. One fellow yelled for everyone to get out of there. His friend, though, stood for a couple of minutes observing the strange creature that appeared to be motionless at that point, while the rest of the group slowly backed away. But when it began to move quickly toward the group with long strides and long arms swinging, fear overtook them and they ran toward the road that led down the hillside. One woman began screaming and had to be pulled along by her husband to leave the area. After quickly reaching the bottom of the hill, they looked back and saw the lofty creature moving toward the hillside, as though it was going to come down the hill after them. They continued home and called the police. The police did go to the location, but nothing was found. The description of what they saw was that of a huge, hair-covered, man-like creature that stood between seven to nine feet tall and was estimated to have weighed between 350 to 450 pounds. Dark fur covered its large, muscular upper body and legs. Its arms were long and its hands hung down below the knees. The creature at times appeared stooped and stood with its legs slightly bent. When it walked, it moved in a forward, arm-swinging motion with an unusual gait. With each step, the right arm and right leg moved forward, and then the left arm and left leg moved forward. The witnesses had no doubt that they saw a creature that was quite strange and unknown to them, and they knew it was not a bear.